Aging. It's the price we pay for living. But it might not always be this way. I think that in 50 years, we'll be able to take a 20-year-old and give them a treatment. They'll be Peter Pan. They'll be forever young. Increasingly, science is revealing how we can slow our biological clocks. The rate of aging is malleable. And these tantalizing glimpses of an ageless future are attracting huge money. Big investors are zeroing in on age reversal research. But does the science live up to the hype? Can we really slow down aging? Or even stop it altogether? When I started the field, it was like, well, let's, uh, let's see. We moved from hope to realizing the promise. If we can slow aging enough so that we don't have diseases of aging, then we will be happy. But there'll be a side effect we might live longer. I want you to walk back to me calling off every other letter of the alphabet, starting with A. A. C. She might not look it, but Gitty is 98 years old. She's a participant in the Longevity Genes Project at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York. My brother died in his mid-80s. My sister, it's now 103. I have a younger sister who is 90. My father died five days short of 95. My mother died at 85 or 86. Not only longer, they live healthier. For the past 25 years, Nir Barzilai has studied the long-lived in a bid to unlock the mystery of aging. When I started studying the centenarian, the question is, do they just live longer or do they also live healthier? And the answer is yes, they're healthy. We have discovered several genes in our centenarians. If we can imitate them, if we can understand what happens to them, we can create it as a drug or, or some other intervention that we could use. Nir is just one of a growing number of scientists chasing a future where aging is no longer inevitable. But what is aging? The longer you live, the greater the impact of molecular and cellular damage in your body, bringing you closer to death. As to why we age, one explanation is the disposable soma theory. There's an evolutionary trade-off between repair and reproduction. It's not obvious why an animal should become more damaged as it gets older. And the evolutionary explanation is a thing called disposable soma theory. And for that, you have to understand that the purpose of an organism is to reproduce. And since it's always at risk of getting killed by the outside world, it makes sense to get your reproducing done as fast as possible. So organisms tend to reproduce when they're young. Evolutionary pressure to keep them in full working order as they get older uh, diminishes. An adult human's risk of death doubles roughly every eight years. At 30 years of age, your odds of dying in the next year are less than 0.1%. At 60 years of age, that risk is 1%. By the time you turn 90, it's over 15%. But this isn't true for all animals. Aldabra giant tortoises, for example, can live to well over 100. And as adults, their risk of death remains roughly constant at just over 2% per year. Biologically speaking, they hardly age at all. So if aging isn't fixed, maybe it can be changed. In the 1930s, a paper by Clive McKay, a scientist at Cornell University in New York State, proved just that. With one simple modification, he revealed a way to make animals stay healthy for longer and even prolong their lives. McKay found that if he restricted the diet of rats to near starving levels, he could increase their lifespan by up to 33%. That was the first time that we discovered that aging could be slowed down. 
and it's true of pretty well every animal that's been tested on. From yeast to dogs. It sounds counterintuitive, but in evolutionary terms, it fits with the disposable soma theory. If you are um, starving, then reproduction is possibly not top of your list of things to do. You want to survive. Uh, and so a mechanism that will prolong life then to allow the animal to arrive at a point where it can reproduce successfully makes sense. Evolution will wish to preserve the animal for better time, but it does preserve health as well. It's not that you uh, have a horrible old age, you have a healthy old age. But keeping yourself hungry for a longer, healthier life is far from ideal. The trick would be to fool the body into thinking it's starving when it's not. And the key to that may lurk in our DNA. In the 1990s, Cynthia Kenyon made headlines when her groundbreaking work with roundworms showed for the first time that genes can play a part in aging. Amazingly, we found that changing a gene called DAF2 could, in one fell swoop, double the lifespan of the animal and cause it to age much more slowly than normal so that it stayed young much longer than normal. Since then, scientists have tweaked various genes in roundworms, resulting in mutants that can live to over five months old, 10 times longer than those without the genetic changes. We now know from work from our lab and from other labs that the reason that this gene change slows down aging is because the genes that we changed are involved in a kind of programmed system of resiliency. They make the animals less sensitive to pathogens. They improve the ability of the animal to repair its DNA, all sorts of things. It's pretty amazing. They're the same changes responsible for increasing lifespan in near-starving animals. Only this time, the animal can eat as much as it wants because its genes have been tricked into thinking it's starving. And humans have the genes. They're right there in us but we don't yet know whether they affect our lifespan or not. Researchers have discovered other genes that affect aging in humans, but changing genes in people is irreversible. A more practical way to slow aging would be to change not genes themselves, but how they're read, modifying something called the epigenome. Epigenetics literally means on top of genes. So you can think of it as a layer of information that are added to the DNA. The epigenome tells genes when to turn on and off. There is a very promising um, therapeutic avenue that is being investigated now called epigenetic reprogramming. Tweaking the epigenome of mice has already shown it's possible to turn back a cell's biological clock, in particular manipulating four proteins known as Yamanaka factors. And if you express those Yamanaka factors in old cells, they change the epigenome and push the cell back in time. Epigenetic treatments are showing so much potential that research money is flooding in. Startups betting they can modify the epigenome to slow down aging are popping up all over Silicon Valley and elsewhere. The claims might sound outlandish, but the science is real. Epigenetics um, or epigenetic patterns are laid down by enzymes, which by nature catalyze mostly reversible reactions. And therefore, if we can target the correct enzymes to change those patterns and convert them back to the youthful pattern, then it means that epigenetics is a druggable field of research in terms of anti-aging. While a drug that can fight aging at the DNA level remains closer to theory than practical application, other methods of turning back the biological clock already exist. For the past few years, I've been endeavoring to build the world's best anti-aging protocol. Some attempts to slow aging are raising eyebrows. Take Brian Johnson, the man whose zeal for a long life is viewed as obsessive by many. These are all the supplements I take. 
In his quest to remain forever young, he's pushed boundaries, even using his own son's blood. One liter out, one liter in for me. As macabre as it sounds, it seems to work in animals. It's known as parabiosis. It's almost like I'd have a vampire story. Parabiosis is when you take two animals of the same species and link their blood circulations together. If you do it with animals of significantly different ages, so one's quite young and one's quite old, the older animal lives longer than you would expect. Although how much of this is down to special qualities in the younger blood is open to debate. There probably are some factors in the crossing over from the young to the old, but it looks as though a lot of the effect is coming simply from the dilution of the bad factors in the old animal. And blood isn't the only gift the young can donate to provide the old with youthful vigor. If you transplant species from a young animal to an old animal, that will extend its lifespan. Not much is known yet about why this works, but the microbiome, the bacteria in the gut, changes with age. Presumably it's adapting to the, uh, the, the host. We know the composition of the microbiome changes as the animal gets older and it becomes more specific. So this might be a way that you can get at longevity through the gut. It might take blood and guts to stay this young, but a range of different drugs are also showing promise at slowing down aging. And some of them have been on pharmacists' shelves for years. A class of drugs that includes desatinib, used to treat leukemia, has been found to extend life in animals by attacking a major contributor to aging. There's a certain kind of cell called a senescent cell. It could have been any cell in your body, but when it becomes senescent, it stops dividing, no longer proliferates, and it becomes highly inflammatory. It's a little center of inflammation right there in your body. And that's a problem because inflammation is linked to a variety of age-related diseases. In animals, where they've cleared senescent cells, it's really remarkable. The animals don't live that much longer, but they're much healthier. Currently, there are nearly 20 clinical trials globally for therapies that clear senescent cells. But this isn't the only class of drug that shows promise in slowing aging. This one is metformin. It's been also taken off-label for longevity purposes. Metformin is a common drug to treat diabetes, but also the people who are using that are protected against a variety of age-related diseases. Metformin mimics dietary restriction by lessening the amount of sugar the body produces and absorbs. The way it works inside a cell isn't completely understood, but it reduces inflammation and helps break down accumulated rubbish. In studies, diabetics taking metformin have lived longer and healthier than people not on the drug, whether they were diabetic or not. Another drug that seems to slow aging is rapamycin, already approved for use with organ transplants. Rapamycin is an immunosuppressant. It changes the way that nutrients are, are sensed and changes the way that they're metabolized in ways which are useful to extending life. Rapamycin boosts the way cells clear up junk that builds up inside them with age. This means they can function better, like a younger version of themselves. Whether they're drugs that already exist or new ones that change our epigenome, anti-aging treatments are coming and the need for them has never been greater. We all know that we have a demographic shift in which fewer young people are supporting more old people. So it's really, really important that our older people stay vibrant and youthful and productive. It's also something we all want for ourselves and for our family and people we love and for everybody. A future where we grow old without aging would benefit billions and give the world an economic boon too. It's not a billion dollar question, it's trillions. The last two years of medical expense of centenarians is third of those who die at seven. If people lived longer with a sharper decline in old age, it would reduce medical expenses resulting from age-related diseases. Although it's impossible to put a price on extra years of healthy life.
One day, hopefully more of us will be as independent into old age as Gitty. As I look back, whoever thought of 98 when I was in my 60s, I never thought of that. But today, 50 is like being a baby. I want to beat my sister right now. My sister is 103. I want to be able to live that long, 120. Thank you for watching. To read more about the science of life extension, click the link. And don't forget to subscribe.